Welcome back to Susan's Kitchen Corner. On this episode, we're going to be making spaghetti and meatballs, so let's get started. We're going to need about two pounds of ground turkey. If you have ground beef, that's fine. If you have ground chicken, that's even finer. Um, never leave the, the meat out on the counter to, to get room temperature, like a lot of people say, because that's very dangerous, because sometimes you get distracted and you know you always want to put the meat in the refrigerator and then when you're about to use it then bring it back out so let's put it back in the refrigerator so here's what else we're going to need we're going to need three stalks of really small celery or two stalks of really thick celery we're going to need fresh basil and i just picked this from my garden well little garden really little garden um half of a red onion, garlic. Now this is all for the meat balls. And then we're gonna need some spices. Now spices you can use, you can use whatever you want. I got some chili flakes. I got some uh, ground black pepper. I got some cinnamon. I got some thyme. Let's see, cumin. So if you wanna add something extra to it, go ahead. So let's get started. First, we're gonna cut up the, uh, something. Let's put this down. Okay, so we're gonna cut off the tops. Turn these around. Cut these off. Okay. And then what you want to do with these, you want to cut these really fine. So we're going to cut these down the middle. And try to come down the middle again. Because we're going to be mixing this into the meat. And it doesn't matter if you accidentally... Oops! doesn't matter. As long as you're cutting them down in the middle. And watch the fingernails because you always want to be looking down at your food while you're cutting it and not looking up and around because that's when accidents happen. When you see someone cooking and they're looking up at the TV screen and they're chopping, it's only a matter of time before they cut themselves. Okay, so we're going to bunch this all together like this. Come over here and we're going to chop it. Mm, chop, 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 chop. One of the things I like to do is I like to grab this and move it forward so the knife stays still and it's like, it's like you're, you got a little machine going. And then watch the fingers. And if they splay out, that's perfectly fine. That's, you know, that's cooking. If one decides to commit suicide, which I have happen all the time, and if you want to get back in there, chop a little bit finer. And the thing about chopping is square it and then chop, 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 chop. These are a little bit bigger pieces, so I'm moving them. Just get in there. One committed suicide, that's perfectly fine. Celery is kind of one of these things that really jumps around when you chop it. So, got two more. That's good enough. So we got a bowl right here. Oh yeah, we're gonna need one egg too, and <sighs> get distracted here. We're going to need, okay, this is not the box, but these are called Planko crumbs or Japanese bread crumbs, and the brand name's Planko, if I'm saying that right, but uh, I like them because there's not much, there's, they're white. Yeah, let me get, so I'll show you later, because we're going to be using them anyway. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take our bowl, we're going to put it right up there and slide that right in. Let's go to our onion, chop, in, chop off the ends. Now we're not going to use this whole onion. This is like, <laughs> uh-uh. 
We just want to use half of it. Yes. And that's a bigger size, so we're going to save that for something else. Take the skin off. Now, I'm going to use a different type of knife for this. Because I got, there's a knife that I got. And for only $19.95, it never goes dull. You know what type of knife I'm talking about. So if you look, this has, if you look at it, it has ridges on it like right there. And um, these knives are only good for two things, tomatoes and onions. Otherwise, I've used this on my chopping block. And I'm the, I'm the ant, uh, anti, uh, anti uh, s spokesperson. <laughs> um, if you have one of these uh, and you like it, that's okay. But these cut the crap out of your cutting board. If you have a wooden cut, a wooden cutting board, I can't say that. It really messes your cutting board up. Where my knife here. This is better for chopping because you're, it's it's just chopping. There's no little ridges. When when your knife have when your knife has ridges and ruffles, it's not a good chopping knife. It's more of a good sawing and chop uh, cutting knife because you know why would you want a, a knife that cuts through uh, like pipes? You don't need knives that cut through pipes. It's kind of like it never gets dull. It's like yeah, it doesn't get dull. <laughs> Because you're you're sawing with it. So, but otherwise, if you have one of these knives, this is where this technique comes in really handy. Is where you saw down and then you don't go all the way through. See how I'm sawing and not chopping. This is sawing. So this is perfect for cutting onions. If you want a good onion cutting knife, this is what I recommend. But most of the time, when you're chopping. You can't chop with this knife. Okay, see like that? And it, it's all... Oh! Well, it just hit my knife on the computer. Now turn it sideways. And saw away. You get really fine pieces. If you have a couple come off, like right, right here, it's okay. And then here's a trick I like to use. Take your knife, pull, push it down, start over again. And it's going it's going to do its own thing. It's like it's starting to uh, unravel on me. There's the hard part right there which we don't want to use. So, now when it comes to this, you can do it, but I prefer this knife because it really gets in there. And there's no little air pockets because it, when it goes down, it goes down and it chops. So let's chop it up a little bit finer. And oh wow! Square it starting to have an emotional, starting to get emotional here because this onion has got the, it is fresh. So just chop it until it's fine. There's a big piece, a few big pieces in there, it's perfectly fine. Okay, let's put this into the bowl. Do a little bit at a time when you're doing it like this, because if you do all of it once, it goes off the sides. Okay, so let's get the garlic and the basil going. Now we're going to want to really mince this. Let me get the peel off here. Actually, we have one already open. What am I doing?
Okay, got something to work with here. Get a small knife. Drop a small knife. Okay, first you want to take this part off. Just peel off the skin. Okay, there's one. And if a little gets piece of skin gets in there, it's not that big of a deal. It's like it's not gonna kill you. I really don't like using the um so a lot of people have the um the ones where you roll the skin off and it's like you know, I it really doesn't bother me doing it this way because it's just like it's part of cooking. And part of cooking is cutting onions that make you tear up. Cooking can be very emotional. Boy, that was a strong onion. Let's do one more. I'm going to really watch the clock on this one because this one's going to be a... Uh, a lot of videos, maybe hopefully not four, but probably so. Okay, let's get rid of all that. It doesn't need to be on the cutting board because we don't want all of that in the food. And I'm gonna get a piece of meat out here and excuse me. This just oh, sorry. I get so emotional about cooking. Okay, so let's get back on track here. Uh, here's the garlic, and what we're going to do is we're going to just coarsely chop, chop. Again, watch the fingers. Just get it in there. There's no rhyme or reason to what size it needs to be. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to gather up the... Uh, the basil cilantro. Got cilantro on the mind. We're going to gather up the basil and we're going to kind of push it down, squish it together, small as you can. See how I'm using a knife? Kind of like fold it over. Do the best you can. Just keep on folding it over. Use the knife so we get kind of like a little square, a little square package. See, I just kind of cram that down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to chop it, move it forward, watch the fingers. Okay, so that's the first time. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to chop it sideways. And it's the same thing. Just get it into a square. And one technique I like to use, I think I taught you before, is we're going to restart the video because, well not restart, but it's getting too close. So I'll be right